welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky. My sister is in my kitchen today, and this is my sister Sarah. Hello, everyone. Today we are going to be making calendula sap. All year I have been working on growing and dehydrating calendula so that we can make this sap. My sister has been making this for a long time, and so she is over here, and we are going to make it together. Some of the benefits that calendula is known for is to be antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral, and an astringent. My sister is going to share with you a couple ways how she uses the sap. So we use it all the time in our home for um, when we have cuts, burns, bruises, uh, dry skin, bug bites, those types of things. Um, I have kids with finicky skin, and so we use it all the time. I actually use it every single night as a face lotion. The reason that I really wanted to make this calendula salve is I suffer from eczema pretty bad on my hands. It kind of comes in waves. And I thought that this calendula salve might be a nice soothing agent for my hands. The full written recipe is going to be down in the description box. I'll link it. It's going to be at scratchpantry.com. So just enjoy us making this. And then at the end, if you want to see the written recipe, you can go to scratchpantry.com. We are actually going to make two different versions of this salve. We are going to make a tallow version. This is grass fed, grass finished tallow that I rendered myself from a cow that I purchased from a local rancher. And we are going to be doing a beeswax one. So my sister is going to go through the ingredients that we need now to make these two different salves. So these are the ingredients you're going to need for the two different kinds of salve that we're going to be making. Dried calendula flowers. Becky grew these and dried them all summer long. And then you need a neutral oil. We've chosen to use organic olive oil. You could also use almond oil or avocado oil. I wouldn't suggest coconut oil because it is a harder oil at room temperature. And then for one recipe, you'll need beeswax. For the second recipe, Becky has grass fed, grass finished beef tallow from the cow that she bought this summer that she rendered. And then it's totally up to you, but you can choose to add an essential oil to give it some scent. Do your own research. Some essential oils are better um, on the skin, some aren't. We're using lavender. It's light, gives a little bit of aroma. We are making these ones as Christmas gifts. So we have two ounce am amber jars and one ounce amber jars. And we also have a little bit of the dried petals. There's some orange ones and kind of like a purpley color. For the gifts, when the oil is in here and partially set, we are going to drop some on top just as an artistic feature. You don't need to do that um, if you're making it at home. I'm going to link all the ingredients needed for both of these recipes down in the description box. And my sister had a really good point about when you are looking for a jar that you want to put your salve in, make sure it's a wide mouth jar that you can actually reach and put your fingers in. And I get all the way to the bottom. And get all the way to the bottom. <laughs> and ideally, you want to make sure they are amber so that they block the UV rays. You could just use a glass jar, but if you want this to store for a little bit longer storage, definitely amber is the way to go. So the first step is actually to make this calendula oil infusion, and that's what we're going to do right now. So we are going to add the olive oil to the flowers, and this is going to sit for six weeks once it has all been covered. Once this is full, we are going to give it just a little stir to make sure that the oil's reached all the packed flowers that are down here and there's no air bubbles. Now we're going to set this in a dry place for four to six weeks, preferably six, to let everything infuse. Through the magic of television, we have some olive oil that has been infusing in the calendula for six plus weeks. We are going to use a strainer and strain it out. You want to make sure too that you take a spoon and just push out, kind of jiggle any extra oil so you get it, all of it out as you can. We are moving on to the next step. So we are going to start by making the beeswax salve. The ratio is for every one ounce of beeswax, you want one cup of the infused olive oil. We did go ahead and pour the olive oil into this regular mouth mason jar so that it would be easier to pour. We are doubling this recipe. We are pouring this into a glass bowl so that we can put it on the stove. Just turn the stove on to simmer. We're going to allow the water to heat up and begin to melt the beeswax. If your bowl happens to be touching in the water, not a big deal. You just don't want your bowl on direct heat and preferably in glass over metal. And we're just going to give it a stir every couple of minutes and you'll quickly see how the beeswax will begin to melt into the olive oil. So you can see the beeswax is just beginning to melt. And so we're going to leave it on here on simmer and give it a stir every couple minutes. 
It is completely melted, so now we need to move on to the next step. Okay. And now we're going to add the essential oils. This is definitely preference here, so add as much as you think that you need for it to smell good. We are probably going to add about 20 to 30 drops. It's already starting to smell really good in here because that oil is a little bit warm. Oh, it smells so good. Okay. What we're doing is we're smelling and we're seeing if we need to adjust how many drops. Sarah put in 20 drops to start with. I think we're going to add at least 10 more. I wish you could smell this. It has the most beautiful scent of honeysuckle. Oh, it smells delicious. Ready? We're pouring it into a container that's got a spout on it so that we can pour them into our jars easy and we're not going to make a huge mess. Oh, this smells absolutely divine. It's a mix of kind of like a spring flower with some honey. And look, you can already see how it's hardening right here on the lip of the bowl. That's really fast. That double recipe fit into these 12 jars just perfectly. That's 18 ounces with just a tiny bit of leftovers. We are moving on to the tallow recipe now, and we are gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio of beef tallow to the infused olive oil. We, we have eight ounces of tallow, so we are gonna add eight ounces of olive oil. Oh, a little bit extra, that's okay. And now we are gonna add one ounce of beeswax. We now have the beef tallow mixture on the stove. It's the olive oil, beef tallow, and beeswax, and it is going to melt on the double broiler uh, for a few minutes. The tallow salve is starting to melt and come together beautifully. It's such a rich golden color, partly the olive oil, but also the beef tallow, which is kind of like a pale yellow, and the beeswax. It's going to be a really pretty golden yellow color when it's done. Here goes the beef tallow salve. Now we're jarring up the tallow salve. One of the cool things about these types of recipes is there's not a hard and fast rule. You can really make it your own. This is a good guideline, but if you live somewhere that's super hot, like Arizona, Texas, things like that, you may want to adjust the recipe by adding some more beeswax because it's going to be a hotter climate. At room temperature, it's more likely to be a little bit more liquidy and so you need a little bit more of the hardening agent. I'm just taking my hands and I'm kind of wiping away any of the extra that got on the rim of it. I'm not sticking my fingers into the jars at this point, but I don't want any of the salve on the rim so that it's not touching when I put the lid on it. And then I can just rub it in. Salves are very shelf stable until you introduce bacteria. Bacteria is all on our hands. So I've kept mine on the shelf for a couple of years and it's totally fine. Once I start using it, I keep an eye on it, uh, but I've used it for definitely six months without any issues. You are gonna wanna store these in a cool, dark place. You're not gonna wanna store them where they're gonna be exposed to a ton of sunlight. As you can see, it's kind of partially set. And so we're just going through and adding a bit of decoration on top. This is 100% optional. I think it just looks really pretty when you're giving it as a gift and you can tell them that it's calendula salve with a little bit of calendula blossoms on top. What we're doing now is the final step and we are bottling up our salve. The way that we've decided to indicate which salve is which, the one without tallow, we put the calendula flowers on the top. These cute amber jars come with a little white sealing lid. You put that on and you just screw the lid on. We just took the tallow bomb out of the refrigerator and I wanted to show you how you use it. It's already hard. It only took, oh, I don't know, maybe like five minutes or so to harden in the fridge. And you just stick your finger in there. Your body temperature will warm it up enough to melt it. And then you just rub it in just like you would any lotion. Like I mentioned earlier, the written recipes will be at scratchpantry.com and I'll link all the ingredients down in the description box below as well. So if you want to try to make your own calendula salve, all the ingredients for both recipes will be linked down below along with these beautiful amber jars. Thank you so much, Sarah, for coming over and teaching me how to make 
this salve. I really enjoyed it, and I think it's going to be a super fun Christmas gift. I love making homemade Christmas gifts. You guys know I actually have a whole playlist of Christmas gift ideas, and if you want to watch that playlist, it will be linked down in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with us today. We had a great time. If you know anyone that would enjoy this video or get value out of it, please consider sharing it to them or giving it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate that. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.